Hi, I'm Tom West and I'm a Solutions Architect at Conversion Data. I had a large involvement in putting all the dashboards that you see with the big data beard to, for them to tell their amazing story on their road trip to Conf. We are a Splunk professional services provider and a partner based in the north of the UK, specialising in working in large organisations such as healthcare and financial services. To find out more information and to work with us, check out conversiondata.com. Welcome back to another episode of Breakfast with the Beards. It is Sunday. We are in Dallas. It is a little chilly out, but uh, I'm looking forward to this episode a lot. So with me is Kyle. What's going Hello. on, buddy? Doing well, man. How are you? I'm, I'm a little cold. I wish I had my sweatshirt, but you know what? I double layered this morning. Not yeah, used jealous. to it. Yeah. You want one? It's a little yeah. warm in here. Yeah. No, I, I think I'm good for right now. Uh, and then also we have a very special guest today, Chip Winslow, who is the Area Vice President for America's Commercial with Splunk. Chip, thanks so much for coming and joining us today. Guys, really happy to be here. Really excited to uh, share this time with you. I, I wish we had some breakfast for you, but maybe afterwards we'll get a, a little bite to eat. Uh, so we are officially, officially past the halfway mark. For Woo-hoo. this trip, it is Sunday. We will be in Vegas in less than in six days. That is terrifying. I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> I need I, to sleep. <laughs> I actually, I think that we could have gone an extra week. Maybe next year we can do three weeks. No, no, uh, no. <laughs> as the head shakes from across, as, yeah. as everyone is shaking their head and rolling I'm their eyes. I don't need that. Nobody needs that. <laughs> well, I apologize because I already signed us up for it last night. Uh, so okay. three weeks next week. No, but it's been a great first week. Really excited. I mean, we've been what to 14 or 15 different states. Uh, yesterday was our second longest drive of the day, though. Yeah, I uh, I think at this point we're going to need day sheets uh, just to remember where we're at and what we're doing because <laughs> it's uh, it's been a whirlwind, but it's been a lot of fun so far. So yesterday, what was your most memorable moment of yesterday oh man uh yesterday morning so we had some technical difficulties but what you didn't get to see from the video is it was grayer darker and colder than today and we were all freezing (laughs) and recording in this motorhome and everybody was driving by looking at there's three different guys (laughs) sitting out there just bundled up freezing i felt so bad for keith yeah it was was just chattering a little bit but he's uh he's a soldier he worked through it rock star i think is the real term um, mine was actually crossing the Mississippi. Oh, yeah? So we finally made the, I guess, leap from the East Coast type of Eastern part of the United States into the West, the the, the big states, and uh, we're going to be driving through Texas for the next couple of days. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing how big Texas is. You know, you don't really think about how you can go 10 hours and still be in the same state. <laughs> yeah. And Chip, what were you saying earlier that everyone in Texas has a ranch? Yeah, everybody in Texas has a ranch, so you drive through past them. That's why. I, that's why I force these guys to come south of Dallas because uh, it's because I was closer to my ranch on the weekend and use data to get here uh, to get around a traffic jam. So uh, okay, it really it really helped out there. I don't know if they were using Splunk to get to my GPS, but it definitely helped out this morning. Well, we really appreciate you letting us avoid Dallas traffic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no doubt, guys. Data does help. How big is your ranch, out of curiosity? So it's about 150 acres. Uh, unlike most people in Texas, my ranch is a little bit different. Uh, we have have thoroughbred racehorses so we have wow. a working ranch that my mother or excuse me, my mother my my wife uh <laughs> runs for us and it's about an hour south of town it's it's most uh, ranches in texas have some sort of cattle i know Kyle, as you know haven't gone a&m um it's um it's one of those situations that it's 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 a passion of my wife just like data is a passion for you guys so it's a it's a great experience and it allows me to get out of the city a little bit that's cool um we had some other interesting things happen yesterday so uh I bought a VR headset, and you can see it here on nice. screen. I, um, it was weird. We were, we were just getting into Arkansas. We had stopped for lunch, and I decided on an impulse, you know what? If we go to Best Buy, I'm going to buy one of these. So uh, I got this yesterday, and we had a lot of fun playing with it. So uh, let me play this back. So you've been driving through states like Virginia, Pennsylvania, and you buy a VR headset in Arkansas? I did. Yeah, that, right. that is it. Talk about some good comedy, guys. That, I know. That is, really, that is really good pod for sure. The best part is we drove into this parking lot in this massive 40-foot RV and parked on a downhill slope. And then we had some water coming out. So we're following the water trail to the Best Buy. We get the, uh, the Oculus. And it's cool. Uh, a lot of cool things to do from games to just playing with videos and stuff like that. But we actually were able to upload our Splunk dashboards. Uh, and go to the browser, so splunk.bigdatabeater.com, port 8000, and we were able to look at all of our dashboards in VR as well. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the things we announced as a uh, as a beta project last year was was VR, mm-hmm. and we, we expect it, and I'm not talking about any futures because we're going to announce a GA, but we expect it to be GA at this.conf, and the use cases around it, 
it basically puts data in people's hands. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and when you think about, and I know we'll talk about this, when we think about the data to everything, well, what's more everything than your phone? Right. The ubiquitous nature of our devices, right, and getting Splunk to that, to be able to write there right in front of you, as you've put right in front of your face, is we're just really excited about. So it's really cool that you've got the VR and A able to be able to sync up some of your stuff oh, that you yeah. guys as part of it. And, and all the AR stuff. So we do have some AR capabilities oh, awesome. already in the RV with the QR codes and, oh, and wow. Splunk Mobile and Splunk AR apps, which are really, really cool as well. Uh, I'm excited for the next generation, next evolution of that. Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. So the last thing I just want to talk about yesterday, because it was an action-packed day. We were driving for about eight hours, uh, a lot of bumps, a lot of fun. I will say that the mood in the RV changed or ebbed and flowed with who was playing football and who was winning in the football game. So yeah, very true. It started early with uh, some high, Sorry, high man. positively. Uh, Kyle, you're a Tennessee fan. I am, and uh, we're we're not having the best time of uh, of the past decade or so. But so the uh, you know the uh, mentality around the game at the start was a little low, and then we saw them starting to win. So the mood rose a bit, and they won. We were great. We moved on to A and M. And uh, started off well, and yeah. so yeah, Corey and, and A and M fan. I'll tell well. you, he was the happiest I've seen in a in a couple days. Uh, when they scored the first touchdown, it was about a six minute drive, beautiful. Uh, and Life then good. birds Alabama were singing; it was great, back. and and we weren't allowed to talk for the rest of the day. Yeah, <laughs> Fred it, ended up sitting in the back. His <laughs> only his only saving grace is that UT got beat by Oklahoma, uh, by Oklahoma in the Red yeah. River ever. So right. Sooner Boomer was it. I am uh it's interesting. I, I am a college football fan, but I look for the beauty of the sports. But I have to tell you, uh I was a little I was very sad that Alabama got got uh, you know the, that they beat AM because my daughter wants to go in A and I've got a lot of guys who work for me, obviously you go to A and M. So yeah. when push comes to shovel, I always root for AM. Yeah, Who's well, your team? You know, guys, uh, I'm 51 years old, right? So I can remember the days when Florida State was really good. Yeah. So um, I, I did kind of default to a Florida State or Ohio State. I'm a bandwagon guy because I didn't go. I went to Ferris State University. I didn't go to A&M. I didn't go to. I, I'm not from Tennessee. I didn't go to BC or anything like that. So you know, where I grew up in upstate New York, you kind of were a Syracuse fan. So I rooted for them, but okay. n- no real big affinity. Well, I am from the East Coast, but I'm a Nebraska fan, and oh, we got boy. trounced by Minnesota last night. So Corey, I'm with you, buddy. It's it's. it's it was a rough day, rough year, but all good. You can't see, but Corey's actually crying behind the <laughs> camera right now. We'll, we'll get him some tissues. So that was our wrap-up. We have been innovating this entire time. We've ha- been having a lot of fun coming up with new segments, new ideas. We have a new one for you that we're going to try out. We love your feedback. And we're calling this Tinker Time. All right, so I hope you liked that video. Uh, I will say shout-out to Corey for this. He put that together this morning in the RV parking lot. I did not have my my vocals ready. I was not warmed up, so a little <laughs> rough on the music or the, the actual song there, but that is made for you by the Big Data Beer team. By the end of this, it'll look like T-Pain video. <laughs> yeah, by the end of the T-Pain video. <laughs> Auto-tune is my best friend. Let's just say that. So Tinker Time, and really the, the point of this segment, is to talk about the cool things that we're doing in the IoT RV, how we're going to add new use cases to Splunk, because there's so much data there. There's questions that we didn't know when we started the trip, but we have now. And what are some new use cases that we're adding to it? So, Kyle, what's the first thing that you want to talk about on Tinker Time? Uh, yeah, so we uh, we took the inspiration from Chris Burnham on the Tesla episode in Nashville. And uh, off, off camera, he uh, introduced us to a couple pieces of technology around uh, new Raspberry Pis, which obviously we had to get our hands on, as well as what's called a wise camera where you can uh, change the firmware and actually have it be a bit smarter and more open sourcey. Uh, so we're going to try and connect that to the front of the bus. So we're currently flashing the Raspberry Pis, getting those ready to go, and then also changing out the firmware of the cameras. Uh, if you guys have ever done that, please give us a heads up. Uh, we're we're still struggling through it with the 4G connection. So <laughs> let us know any tips or tricks you got. Has anything been bricked up yet or all good? I'm not saying I did brick the camera last night, but it's uh, it's not turning on. So, <laughs> so, so Tinker Time isn't going to be a... We succeeded 100%. It's we're 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 iterating through all this, so we're it's fun to see it. some of some challenges. We had another use case that we came up with yesterday, uh, based on Corey's thoughts, and it was really around. We have some troubles with networking, as as we've complained about 
relentlessly on on these shows throughout the last seven days or six days that we've been traveling, uh, we wanted to splunk our our networking just to see uh, which what network networks are around how much uh, signal we're in each one, and some other data. So Kyle, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so it gets pretty interesting. You know, we're driving across, seeing quite a few different people, uh, a lot of different areas too. So driving down the highways, catching different Wi-Fi signals that we see across the board and the signal strength, but then also hitting these RV parks where we have 40 different Wi-Fi access points. So we, we'd like to see who's naming what and where and go off the signal strength of there and maybe see what kind of uh, patterns we can pull out of that. So uh, not necessarily so much of an internal uh, network scan, but more of an external kind of probing and seeing what's going on from different networks that we pass by. But this does pose a little bit of a challenge because some of the actual tools that we downloaded initially gave us so much data that we really didn't want to bring all into Splunk at this point, right? There's some some personal data that maybe we wanted to keep away and just Ooh. wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. we were being respectful of other people's Wi-Fi, everything, right? So what are, you, what are we doing to help kind of fix that? What, what's the next step? Yeah, so we uh, – <laughs> we, we kicked off Wireshark just to start, and then we realized, wow, that's a lot of data <laughs> for what we need. So uh, we're, we're working through a couple different just built-in Linux commands to see what we have, uh, just to pull the SSID and then the signal strength off we'll of that. So, so pretty pretty simple at a start, uh, but just making sure that we get it uh, into Splunk properly and making sure that we're following best practices there. Yeah. So, Chip, you, you talk to a lot of customers all the time, and they range from very, very small Splunk ingestion environments or even just small customers that are looking to go to Splunk to larger deployments. What are some of the cool things that customers that you're talking to are tinkering with? Yeah. What we're seeing a lot, especially in our space, um, a lot of healthcare applications, right? Um, you know, obviously, as the population ages and we have more data and more information, right? The ability for um, our customers to to really change the game and the way people live. So we have a customer who's going to present at um, at Splunk. He's a one. They're a one gig customer. They're based at, they're based just outside of Houston, Aki Health, and they use one gig. But what? But it's much more of an IoT case that it's really getting the power of data into the hands of the practitioners. And it's a really compelling use case. And it's it, it's it's very high value data, so it doesn't really fit into data everything, but they're using data to make decisions about everything. If you think about our lives, right? I mean, if we don't take a breath, there is no everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's where I'm most excited because the, the amount of, of new data and leverage the data in that healthcare, um, I mean, we've got to be very concerned about how we live and applying Splunk to things like that are just goodness for people, I think is really good. So I'm really excited about the healthcare applications that we can use and leveraging Splunk for that. I like that. Do you have anything that you would recommend that we tinker with or any, anything that you would suggest to us to, as a use case to add? You know, as, and I'll link this in, you saw the signal effects uh, acquisition, mm -hmm. right? So that DevOps place, I, all of you guys are deep technologists, right? You know the value of, of this third pillar of the business. Um, the more we can get our customers and our partners thinking about how to, how to leverage the power of Splunk in that DevOps continuum that is growing every day, I think that is going to be a, a awesome uh, set of use cases, which quite candidly, I don't, I think are just, we're just scratching the surface right now. Yeah. We're actually going to be heading up to a Boulder in a couple of days and we're going to be meeting with uh, Bill Emmett and team from Victor Ops. And I think that's a really cool uh, technology. And again, last year's acquisition right. that I would like to leverage and tinker with more to uh, go from alert to action. So we're excited about that. Uh, speaking of healthcare, and then we're going to transition to the interview. We have not really talked about our health in the RV uh, publicly. <laughs> or, the lack three, thereof. or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. The three of us were talking about it a little bit last night and looking at the dashboards. And uh, wow, uh, if you check out the dashboards, please don't be alarmed. It's not all bad, but what's going on with our health, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. Uh... Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> How many steps have we taken collectively? Uh, I think we're actually, so my my normal average is about ten to 12,000 steps a day back home. And I think so far on the trip, I've averaged 15,000 steps for the total trip. <laughs> and it, it's, uh, it, it's not that we're not trying. It's just that when you have to spend 10 hours a day in a seat, it doesn't leave for much time for you to get out and do stuff. But what we are noticing is uh, I think I have the highest heart rate out of everybody, <laughs> which probably goes hand in hand with the amount of caffeine I'm consuming. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's quite interesting. We're getting it uploaded. We're getting everybody connected on the same network. Uh, shout out to the uh, HealthKit app in Splunk Base. Um, 
And uh, yeah, th- I think that's really what we've seen so far has been the the excitement and the trends against the differences between us. Yeah, I also think that it's only it's it's powerful, but we need to have better discipline in pushing our data to Splunk, right? Mm. Because we have to be on the same network uh, to be able to do that. And there's some challenges maybe we can tinker with. But I think uh, the 15,000 steps that you have collectively taken over the last seven days is not entirely accurate but pretty close probably yeah i i think too the accuracy of the sensors we're using probably isn't uh the best but then again we are we are doing this quite uh quite ad hoc and on a consumer budget so uh, you know if you we could add scooters bit. to that maybe we would get to you know twenty thousand. maybe that's where my heart rate's coming from <laughs> is my uh bad scooter riding a little, a little terrifying to get on those things yeah yeah well, that's funny well Chip, again, thank you so much for joining with us. I would like to just start off with just, can you explain your role a little bit and your background that kind of led you to Splunk in your current position? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. So first off, uh, I look after half of the Americas for our commercial segment. Uh, the way we go to market here in America is we, we segment our customers by uh, revenue size. Mm-hmm. So I look after uh, companies under 500 million and below. By the way, that's kind of a fuzzy line because we have some of your customers, but by and by, it's it's what we would call the traditional mid-market. That's where we live. Uh, that's where my sellers live. And I've got a counterpart uh, on the West Coast who looks after the other half, Andrew Devlin, and we report to a guy by the name of Ken Horner. Okay. Um, prior to Splunk, how long have you been with Splunk? I've been with Splunk about 15 months. So so it's interesting. My, uh, my technology and software background uh, started very haphazard. My dad was a CIO. And by wow. the way, I had never written a line of code, took one computer science class in college, uh, you know, had to do like three or four lines of code. But I'm old enough to where I can remember being a kid taking my da- when when my dad moves off is taking his punch cards from one to another. Oh, right? Yeah. I, I still think in his basement we've got some old punch cards. So I've been around technology for a long time, but over the last 25 years selling software, uh, I've I've worked in a lot of digital transformation type industry. Like I sold e-commerce. Uh, right. And I sold e-commerce from 99 through uh, 2010. And so that was really that first bastion of true digital transformation. But now as we talked about kind of off camera, I mean, data is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously, no pun intended, data is everywhere, <laughs> as we'll segue a bit. But um, so I got here. So the guy that, that is our head of worldwide sales, Christian Smith, and I used to work together uh, between 06 and 011. And that's how I get here. Full disclosure, guys, until he had, until he had came here, I'd never heard of Splunk. Yeah. And I'd been in technology my whole life, and the more I got to learn and know about Splunk, I'm like, wow, the, the, the incredible things we do as a company, not just for our customers, but as a company, our culture, and some of the things we'll talk about for the mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> the venture capital, with Splunk for good, it just is like, I tell I tell Doug Merritt and Susan every time I see him, I go, you're going to have to wheel me out of here at 70, because I'm not leaving. This place <laughs> is, is so great, not only from a, from a culture standpoint, but with Tim's doing from innovation, which mm-hmm. obviously we're really excited about next week at .conf, it just... I've had a fair amount of jobs in technology. This is the greatest company to work for. It's amazing the growth and the excitement around this company. It's definitely yeah. special. I mean, you know, when 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 Doug and Susan talk about, you know, this our our movement from perpetual subscription and all the customers that have adopted there to the products we're coming out with through our acquisition, it's I mean, we are in rarefied air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's only been a bit, been 11 companies to do what we do from a revenue standpoint. Uh, we're trying to get to a, a much more smaller, finite to be held in the same uh, breath as a Microsoft or a, or a Salesforce. But it's all about our customers, right? We can't do what we do without our customers. And then quote second is our business partners, right? This, this triangle of truth, as I like to call it, between us, our partners, and our, and, and our customers, it only gets stronger every day. And quite so much in what we'll talk about in a bit is .conf. Most software companies, their conference is a selling event. It, mm-hmm. it just is. They're, I've never, and this is only my second one, but I've never been associated with a software company that treats their conference as a true customer event. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I think the number is like 70% of our, uh, our, uh, our sessions are customer-led. Um, we, we, everything we do is about customer first. So if Susan was sitting in this chair, she would tell you that customer first, customer first. Doug was just in our office 10 days ago, customer first. So every innovation, every product, everything we do is about how do we make that customer Mm -hmm. get more value out of Splunk? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I I think that part of that and what makes Conf really special as well is the community feel. We had the Splunk Trust on a couple of days ago. We've had this, you know, common thread across all of our our conversations, but the community is so rich and vibrant that it, it turns it from a sales conference to that customer focused, customer first conference. Well, and it's interesting. Uh, you just said something in your last segment about 
Splunk base, right? Oh, when we think about Splunk, it's proprietary. It's just, I'm like, really? Don't you understand about the community? Go talk to a guy wearing a Fez at Conf and tell me that this is not, that this is proprietary. I mean, it, it really comes back to that, hey, what is... What can't you do with Splunk? It's not what can you do. It's what can't you do. And so when we talk about, and I know I'm stealing your thunder, we talk about data to everything. Deal away. When, when Doug talks about, and Susan, and Tim, and, and, and Hi Ann and Rick talk about data to everything, we truly mean everything. And so we're, we're challenging our customers, don't think about what you can do. What aren't you doing it with it? And, and don't worry about, don't worry about what is high value and low value data. All data is important. Some days, some data is just more important than others, right? <laughs> so let's dive into this data to everything. This is, it's not, it's a continuation of the Splunk's, you know, strategy, but talk a little bit about what's new and, because you guys had a pretty big uh, announcement and event a couple weeks ago. Just talk about that a little bit. Wow. Um, anytime you can get a former president, someone who's articulate and as intelligent as Barack Obama, show up and sit down with you, you know you're doing something right. <laughs> I mean, we had a, a litany of customers and partners, and the press has been great. We were, right afterwards, we were the top trend uh, across all of Google with regards to the word data. Um, wow. The strike event that Carrie and, and team put together, I, like I said, I've, if you look at my head, I've, I've, been, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've never been associated with, with such a lean in event uh, as we did with our strike event and launching data to everything. All the nuanced pieces around it, not only about the event itself, but the messaging, but, but some of the things we announced around uh, predictive pricing and changing the model and changing really the perception of Splunk. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is, uh, I call it Splunk 2.0. Okay, so changing the perception of Splunk, and part of that you said is predictive pricing. What has changed? What what is new with pricing and can you dive into kind of some of the specifics there? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's going to be really compelling for our customers. Okay. Um, I sit across from CIOs, CTOs and CISOs every day and by and by they're like, man, I love Splunk but, and I know it's coming, but or an asterisk. And I said, well, you know, it's interesting. So if I gave you Splunk for a dollar a gig, you tell me you, you, you tell me you put every piece of data you have all day long twice on Sunday. So, so somewhere between a, a dollar a gig and some other number, we have a solution, right? So this is a math problem. And that's all we have to solve. So we're trying to solve the math problem. And, and the math problem isn't so much uh, the known, it's the unknown. It's, hey, what happens if I ingest this data source? I think it's this big, but it could be this big. So let's take that off the table. Let's look at virtual CPUs. Let's look at um, things which are very linear and predictable that go, hey, if I do this, I get this. Because the biggest concern for every economic buyer that we have at Splunk, every champion we have, every CFO is, what happens if I spike the meter? Mm -hmm. I think it's this amount of data. So what we're trying to do with predictive pricing is align more with customer wishes and wants. And that goes back to that customer first we were talking about. We've, we listen to our customers, right? Everything we do, not just from a product standpoint, but from a go-to-market is, hey, our customers saying, we'd love to do more with Splunk. Mm -hmm. Help us do that. And so we think with predictive pricing, we're along the way. Yeah, and I kind of, I see it as we're, Splunk wants to be in the customer growth game. We want to help you, customer, grow, and we want to be alongside you. So as you grow, you grow with us. And I feel like that, that you're doing some things with software where it's not no longer just a static ingestion amount. It's as you grow, you'll have more flexibility and more options. Is that kind of the, the theme there? It, it is. And if you look at our acquisitions, right, traditionally over the last 16 years, right, we've really... It's interesting if you look at the curves, right? You start off, we started off in IT operations, right? Got the mm -hmm. network, on the network. Things you guys have just talked about for a bit, right? And then all of a sudden, security information event management. All of a sudden, we, we become the gold standard air and those, those lines are kind of great. And now we make an acquisition like SignalFX and say, hey, we are, we are not just sticking our toe into DevOps. We know that this is the third pillar. Talking to the CTO or talking to the VP of engineering because I will tell you, Jeff Bezos changed the game. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is he said, wow, big truck <laughs> everything's bigger in texas yeah. <laughs> what what you know what he what, what he double dog dared everybody to do was hey don't think of just using commercial off the shelf he, he basically went back to when my dad was a cio of building applications mm -hmm. to suit the business need and and now devops just isn't for software companies it's for all companies that want to leverage technology as a compelling uh enabler to the business yeah so to to your point right getting splunk and getting getting our customers access to all their data, not just what they perceive as high value, we think is going to be really compelling in the DevOps space because when you're thinking about maintaining critical business services or, more importantly, bringing compelling applications to market that can change the paradigm from a revenue growth standpoint, 
man, that's Splunk all day long and twice on Sunday. Now, Splunk has also been expanding its portfolio as well through quite a few acquisitions like Victor Ops, Phantom, Signal FX. And then I, I heard that they also made a formal announcement around Splunk VC. Is that correct? One of the co- one of the key components about Splunk and in, in back in the days from Rob and Eric and the guys is like like how do we how do we do more? Mm-hmm. And doing more just isn't about making more money or having more customers. It's doing more to the ecosystem, and we consider the ecosystem everything. Hence, data and everything for the third time. Doug and Susan would be very happy. I'm slipping in, but <laughs> you know we, we've had Splunk for good for a very long time, right? Mm-hmm. And that is a that is a program we have for non for profits to to have a pretty significant discount um, at the low end to get on board, like free, and then we there right to to really have one of my big customers, Compassion International. Yeah. They're talking about leveraging Splunk to help with human trafficking. Man, if that's not Splunk for good, yep. there's nothing else. Yeah. So so when we developed our our two venture funds, right, we thought that. Um, there were the, there were two things that really hit. how can we get how can we uh, drive innovation so companies want to do more with their data and basically create companies in that right so that's our innovation VC we feel very strongly that people that want to use unstructured data and all data to have a going being going concern to have a good business model let's invest there right let's let's help them go forward that creates a little bit of an incubation uh, you know chamber almost that you guys could potentially leverage technologies down the road to grow your portfolio it does but that's secondary we just want to f- just want to help foster we want to foster innovation foster growth we want that next really smart person sitting at Tennessee Tech to go hey how can I use Splunk to create a business and by the way if it, it if it becomes part of our ecosystem great if not if they're just using Splunk and using data that's really that's really powerful stuff. And then clearly on the other side, right? We want to we want to invest and place our bets with people that want to genuinely do good for the world. And so if you look at our other venture fund, I, I think that just is really core back to wh- what Splunk is and who it is and why we why we do what we do and why we think that all data is important. Mm. Makes sense? No, it does. And yeah. and I will say that you know the Splunk for good uh, project that the team that does that it, it's awesome. They yeah, have a Corey, booth at conf, and I would Corey's just. Corey's just. I mean, I, I, that guy. I think I work hard. I mean, the emails I get from him on various customers. You're talking to this one. Talking. How can I help? I mean, Corey Marshall just does a wonderful job um, in that whole affairs. But it just just really gets people excited about. Hey, we're just more than a software company. Yeah. And so if you're going to conf, check out the Splunk for Good booth because they have a re- lot of really cool stories, some cool giveaways. Uh, check that out, um, and and you'll be blown away by how much Splunk is doing in that space. Uh, so speaking of conf, uh, it's a, a week away. Right. right? You, we're all going to be converging on Vegas around Sunday, Monday morning, officially starts Monday. What are you most excited about? Man, it's tough, you know, because I ask that question <laughs> all the time, and there can only be one most exciting thing. I think for the most thing I'm most to say for our customers to see that we are continuing to invest in them, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, not just with our acquisitions, not just with our products, but just continuing to build a an ecosystem of of partners and other customers that some days they may compete, other days not, but they're able to get shoulder to shoulder. And how can we do more with Splunk? And I think it goes back to the comments we were having just a bit ago about how this really is a customer conference Mm -hmm. versus a sales. Absolutely. And everything we do is like our birds of a feather things. It's just, it's just get people really linked up to say, Hey, you know, we may not be in the same industry, but I have a similar use case. How are you doing that? No, yeah. I like that. I a lot. think that's what I'm most excited about. Uh, that that is exciting. I'm excited for a lot of the, like you said, most of the sessions are going to be customer driven sessions. So many great stories out there as well. Just goes back to that theme of a customer first conference. The search party. Have you heard what uh, what's going I, on there? I, I have not, and I don't know how it can top last year's because last year's was pretty uh, was pretty awesome. I mean, I, I got to tell you, Harry Potter World <laughs> at eleven o'clock at night. How can do you, you know? Imagine? So last year's was in it was in Orlando. It was the conference, and it was at the Universal Studios uh, Park. They rented it out for a couple hours. You could ride the rides. They had all the food vendors open, and it was it was awesome. So you're right. It, I don't know how you top that, but. It is going to, they, they have announced it, so it's going to be a Splunk Village, so to speak. And it's going to be a Halloween Splunk party. Splunkville. Yes, yeah, They built a city, built around data. Wow. Yeah, so uh, I'm excited for that. We're, we're thinking about our Halloween costumes because it is a Halloween party. So I think that it's, I'm excited for a lot of the customer stuff, a lot of the, the learning, but then the fun that we have at SplunkConf as well. You know, it's interesting. Splunk as a culture, right? I mean, I, I, and I think Doug and Susan, and from what I know about Eric and Rob and the guys back in the day, it's... 
we work very hard. Our customers mm-hmm. work very hard. Um, but if you're not having fun while you're doing it, mm-hmm. it's time to do something else. And I can tell you the energy that Doug and Susan and Tim and everybody brings to bear, right? It just emulates that. We work very, we all work very hard together, but we also are just genuinely good people who like to have fun. And most of our customers are feel the same way. Absolutely Love contagious. It, it yep. is very Love contagious. It. Well, Chip, thank you so much for your time today. We'll see you uh, in a week in Vegas. Uh, and thanks for joining us on Breakfast. Guys, Spears. first off, a I really appreciate the opportunity to talk. You guys are doing a great thing these two weeks. Uh, welcome to Texas. Uh, I know this is your first one. I know you're. I know you get to go to the mothership tomorrow, so that'll be uh, that that that'll be a that, that'll be a fun experience for sure. But listen, um, I I don't know if you guys can see because obviously I'm around three bearded guys, but I did try to get on message with the beard. Uh, the streaming it's heartwarming. Yep. It, it's, it is because I wanted to be like that. My wife was like, "Why haven't you shaved?" I'm like, "With the beards, <laughs> come on, <laughs> let so, it grow." Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing everybody next week. So everybody, everybody who's out there, have a great conf and get, have a good schedule from Agenda because there's a lot going on and just get the most out of it. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. See you. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Breakfast with the Beards. Breakfast with the Beards is part of the Big Data Beard road trip to Splunk's Conf 2019. Be sure to check out all of our great content at BigDataBeard.com and also follow our podcast in your favorite podcast app simply by searching Big Data Beard. This amazing adventure would not be possible without our incredible sponsors. We thank you, Dell Technologies, VMware, Red River Technologies, Aero Electronics, and Converging Data for making the road trip to Splunk.conf 2019 possible. We'll see you down the road.